But I guess the question then I have for you, though, is could NSF have shut real water down if uh, they gave them a failing score? A Way versus AffinityLifestyles.com, case number A228561476 B. Good morning, Your Honor. Martin Little from Howard and Howard. I'm here for NSF International. Good morning, Your Honor. Eric Pepperman for plaintiffs. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, David Burlock, the nine in natural foods and whole foods market. Okay. Oh, good um, morning, Your Honor. Danielle LeBounty on behalf of defendant Costco. And John Carlson on defendant of Nevada Beverage Co. This is good Ryan morning. Flanagan for Anna Instruments. Good morning, Your Honor. Joel Ledoux on behalf of the Real Water Entities. Anybody else? Okay. And this is Defendant NSF International's motion to dismiss. I have read your papers. Um, Mr. Little, I, I've got a question for you because it, maybe it wasn't quite clear. Maybe I just missed it in reading. Um, but NSF was the auditor. Right? Correct. A facilities auditor. Not, they didn't inspect or test the product, the, the water in question. Okay, they are the facilities auditor. And um, as the facilities auditor, if they find something wrong, can they um, force real water to not put out that product on the market? Or is it just, we're telling you that there is something wrong here and then real water does what it does? Correct. That's the crux of our argument here on both duty and causation. They had no ability to uh, shut down the facility or to, uh, to, to make it so real water couldn't distribute uh, or sell its products through Costco or any other retailer where these plaintiffs may have purchased it. They simply did a facilities audit that gets reported to both real water and Costco and that it's out of our hands. And it, again, this is a, this is a third party uh, facility audit. We didn't go in, unlike the, the, and we can talk about it in more detail, unlike the cantaloupe cases, the bad cantaloupe cases that they cite from other jurisdictions, uh, NSF wasn't inspecting the product. We did absolutely no testing on the water. We just went and inspected the, 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 the facility, and as you'll see, they allege, they quote in their complaint directly from the facility report, and it's, it's largely, the deficiencies found are largely paperwork or staffing issues. And then there was a re-audit and those were corrected. But I, I hope that answered your question. Okay. It's your, it's your motion, so I'll listen to you. Very good. Now, we don't dispute that Nevada is a notice pleading jurisdiction or that this court is required to accept the plaintiff's factual allegations as true. However, Nevada still requires the plaintiffs in this case uh, to plead a legally sufficient claim against NSF to avoid dismissal. And as we pointed out in our papers, they haven't done this for two independent reasons. First, consistent with the 2009 Sanchez decision that uh, both sides uh, cited and discussed at length, they failed to allege facts that would impose a duty of care on a third-party facility inspector like NSF International uh, to an unidentifiable member of the public like these plaintiffs. Second, they failed to allege facts showing that NSF's allegedly negligent facility inspection was the proximate cause of their injuries. Stated differently, and this is to the point you had asked about, they haven't and cannot in good faith allege that NSF had the ability to shut down Real Water's uh, facility or stop the sale of its water to any of these customers. Now, they, as I pointed out, they cite a number of cases from other jurisdictions where a negligence claim was allowed to proceed against a third-party food inspector stemming from some contaminated uh, cantaloupe that injured some people. Uh, but significantly, Your Honor, those, those cases are not binding authority in Nevada. Uh, they're contrary to the binding Sanchez decision, and they're also factually in opposite because they involved an actual product inspection. In our case, it's not disputed. In fact, they plead that NSF only performed a facility audit and did not test or inspect any of the contaminated water. I would submit to your honor, that's a critical distinction, particularly when they have not alleged 
that NSF's facility inspection would have made any difference in the contaminated water reaching these plaintiffs. So I, I want to talk about duty and causation, but I, I think it's first important to examine the bare-bone allegations made against my client. In fact, there's only three paragraphs with any factual allegation against the NSF. It's paragraphs 25, 204, and 206 of the first embedded complaint. By the way, could... Um when was that filed? I want to pull it up. Uh, don't have that in front of me. It's been several months. Uh, Your Honor, I have the amended complaint was filed on March 7th, 2023. March 7th of 2022? 2023. It's the third amended complaint, I believe. There's a lot of stuff been filed in this case. Okay. Or it, it's a titled amended complaint, so it might Got be. Got it. Let me yeah. get to the ninth cause of action. Sure. Okay, there we are. Okay, go ahead. There's a, there's a number of allocations, but they're all legal conclusions except for three, paragraphs 25, 204, and 206. And those correctly state that NSF performed a facility audit in December of 2018 and the NSF found a number of issues, which they quote directly out of the facility audit report. And again, the issues that they found were largely paperwork and staffing uh, uh, driven. Uh, they then incorrectly state in their complaint that despite these findings, real water received a passing score. That's not accurate. And in their opposition, they, they concede that that's not what happened. Well, I guess I'm looking at it that uh, whether it is or not, the fact of the matter is your client could not have shut down the facility whether right. they had a passing score or a failing score, right? Right. Okay. Correct. Um, the, the reality, uh, just stepping back a second, is Costco required real water to have annual inspections of its facility using Costco's criteria. This is a kind of criteria that we put forward uh, as the auditor. Costco put it forward. Real Water then contracted with NSF to perform these annual one-day facility audits. These, these uh, are, are one-day audits. I, I think the charge is about $1,000 or $1,500 for the audit. Uh, Mr. Little, I have another question sure. for you. Um, has Real Water been deposed yet? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I know partially the answer to that because in their opposition brief, they, they cite to your honor two deficits limited parts of two depositions of two former real water employees. We, of course, were not privy to those depositions. We've not been privy to any discovery that's happened in this case yet. Um, we've since been named in, I think, five or six other cases uh, in, in other courts. Um, so it's, it's a bit confusing, but we, we, to this point, we've not participated in discovery. But yes, I believe, based on their opposition, at least two former real water employees were deposed. Okay, and is there any testimony, because I, I am looking at the opposition, um, looking at page six and seven, um, where there is some deposition testimony, um, that, is there any testimony that real water says, look, if, if we had gotten a failing score, we would not have put the water out. I, I think they're trying to apply that, but they critically, neither of those deponents actually state that NSS facility audit had the ability to shut down real water or to stop the distribution of its products. They say, oh yeah, we were worried about it. We were worried about what Costco might say, but they don't go so far, and they took these depositions, they don't go so far as to say that NSS third-party facility audit, not a product audit, actually had the ability to shut them down uh, or or stop the distribution and sale of the product. And that the reality is that's just not the case. And although we don't think your honor should be considering extraneous depositions as part of a motion to dismiss, if you do, I think it's important that you consider the contract that we attached and cited to in our reply. And that contract makes several points, for, and points uh, very, very clear. One, NSF was not inspecting or certifying, certifying any of Real Water's products. Again, facility inspection, not product. 
Two, real water would remain solely responsible for any injury or death arising out of the use of its products. Third, under the contract, NSF would have no liability to real water or any third party with respect to its facility audit. And, and fourth, and, and equally important, the contract was for the benefit of real water and NSF only, and specifically and explicitly not any other person or entity. Now those provisions, Your Honor, are, are certainly germane uh, to the duty and causation analysis here if the court decides to go outside of the pleadings. Um, so I guess I want to shift gears and let's talk about the, the duty element first. Um, again, two independent bases, I think, uh, to dismiss. Duty, as you know, is a question of law for the court to decide. And the question you need to decide is whether Nevada law imposes a duty of care on a third-party facility auditor to a member of the general public simply because the plaintiff was injured from consuming bottled water produced in that facility. That's, that's really the question here. And we believe the 2009 Sanchez decision from our Nevada Supreme Court is controlling. Sanchez holds, quote, no duty is owed to control the dangerous conduct of another or to warn others of the dangerous conduct, except in limited circumstances that aren't applicable here. Those circumstances where a duty to aid others applies is where two elements are satisfied. One, there has to be a special relationship between the defendants and the identifiable victims, one. And two, the harm created by the defendant's contract, uh, conduct has to be foreseeable. And here, Your Honor, if you look at their opposition, they want to ignore the first element, the special uh, relationship element, and jump to the, solely to the foreseeability component. But the Sanchez decision forbids that. They have to prove both elements to have a special relationship to create a duty in this type of circumstance. And there, there, there simply is no special relationship between NSF, a third-party facility auditor, and these unidentifiable members of the general public. This is just like the Sanchez case where our Supreme Court said there was no special relationship between a pharmacy and the plaintiffs who were injured in an automobile accident by a customer of the pharmacy whom the facts showed the pharmacy was aware that this person was a drug user. Even in that circumstance, the, the, the pharmacy had received uh, notification from the state that the customer was a potential uh, drug abuser. They nevertheless dispensed medication. The person drove under the influence and, and injured the plaintiff. The Supreme Court said, wait a minute. There's no special relationship between the pharmacy and these members of the public, so there is no duty. Same analysis applies here. And again, in addition, there, there's, this is not a situation where the plaintiffs submitted to the control of NSF. In addition to not even knowing who NSF was, NSF had no power to act or control real water, Costco, or anyone else in this case. So again, one we we performed a one-day facility audit uh, uh, and, and gave no control or power over the bottom, and had no control or power over the bottom water itself. We were not testing the water. We couldn't shut them down. We had no ability to, to halt distribution, none of that. And they haven't alleged that, and they can't. So we, we had no ability to act, uh, and there simply is no special relationship. And under Sanchez, uh, that there's no duty and this, this matter should be dismissed. Um, you know, we cited the Corsi case, which is an, another cantaloupe case, which I think follows um, the, the, the Sanchez analysis and says that there's no relationship and hence no duty. Um, in their opposition, they tried to stave off dismissal by arguing, well, that this case fits under Nevada's Good Samaritan statute. Uh, which is found in the restatement of torts, um, respectful, respectfully, uh, that, that can't save the plaintiffs in this case. Um, that doctrine, first and foremost, is not alleged anywhere in, in the four corners of their pleading, nor are there any factual allegations that would trigger the Good Samaritan statute. So I, I think we could stop the analysis there. Their failure to plead it, I think, is fatal, at least facts that would bring them within that, that statute is fatal, um, but, but 
even if they were given an opportunity to amend, it would be futile because they can't validly allege Good Samaritan under our facts, and here's why. Uh, Nevada's law is clear. That would require NSF to uh, engage in an an undertaking necessary for the protection of third parties, which is just simply not the case here. Our job was to inspect the facility and report our findings to Real Water and Costco. We did that. We had no control over the manufacturer, sale, or distribution of these water bottles. Um, and and our, our contract, as I pointed out, clearly shows that we did not assume that they did. Calling emergency service. 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 Emergency there's also a three-part subtest under the Good Samaritan statute, which they can't, uh, they can't meet. Uh, one, NSF did not increase any risk that otherwise already existed. Two, NSF did not assume a duty owed by others to the plaintiff. And third, they didn't rely on us. Um, and there's no such allegation that they did. So uh, this, this Good Samaritan doctrine can't bail them out of the Sanchez case and the lack of duty here. Um, lastly, I'll turn to the second independent basis for dismissal, which is lack of proximate causation. Uh, I agree with them that factual disputes regarding causation are something that's a question of fact for the jury, but no facts have been pled here um, demonstrating that NSF's audit or re-audit uh, caused or, or resulted in the contaminated water uh, that was being manufactured or sold getting food plaintiffs. Again, this is what I said. We had no control over anything. We had no ability to shut them down, to stop production, anything like that. So there, there is a missing link in the causal chain that they've not alleged, and respectfully, we can't allege it. I'll give that our contract. So unless the court has any other questions, I think there's two independent bases, and this case should be dismissed. Thank you. Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. First, it was it was uh, argued that the Halo cases are inapplicable and contrary. Your Honor, I would respectfully submit that uh, the Halo cases are exactly analogous, address these same issues, and are uh, extremely persuasive in this situation. Um, and don't have to take my word for it. The Corsi case, which is the one outlier cantaloupe case where a federal district court in Wyoming said without much uh, analysis that there was no duty in Wyoming, uh, the, the vast overwhelming majority of the courts addressing the cantaloupe cases all explained what exactly why uh, there is a duty in these cases, and it boiled down um, just comes comes down to a simple negligent inspection claim, uh, and which is factually laid out, sufficient to put NSF on notice of the claim for us to get into discovery and litigate all the issues that they claim are reasons why this should be dismissed. Those are factual issues, not appropriate for dismissal as a matter of law at this stage. The Plaintiff, the complaint sufficiently alleges a, a basic negligent inspection claim. NSF audited and inspect, inspected the real water facility. It had a legal duty to exercise reasonable care in carrying out its audit. It breached that duty. Uh, uh, we lay out many ways that NSF breached its duty, but among other things, specifically the the report states and the complaint alleges quote that NSF observed that there is no qualified individual to provide a level of competency necessary for production of clean and safe product NSF is out there 
they have a legal duty to, to act reasonably under the circumstances. They see that there's, there's no one competent to, to make a safe product, yet they continue to certify them. They don't, they pass, give them a passing score. So any uh, retailers are going to look at this report and say, oh, Real Water's passing it. They're not going to look into it. Real Water's not going to take action uh, to, to correct anything based on the audit company that they retained breaching its duty to exercise reasonable care and giving them a passing score when their own report says there's no one competent there to produce a safe product. As a result of that negligence, Real Water continues producing an unsafe product. Plaintiffs consume that product, they were injured, and they suffered damages. That's the basic tenets of a negligent inspection claim. It's adequately uh, pled against NSF. Everything else is a subject for discovery, factual disputes that uh, can, can be uh, looked at and argued at a later date. It's not a basis for a motion to dismiss. But I guess the question that I have for you, though, is could NSF have shut real water down if uh, they gave them a failing score? Well, two things on that, Your Honor. Number one, we don't know what would have happened if NSF would have met its, uh, it would have exercised reasonable care. What would have done? What would have happened? I think that is a fact of discovery. Whether they had the outright authority to say, we're shutting you down, I don't know that that's the case, but that is irrelevant. That's not what's required. And again, I think the well, the it gets case. into a causal question for me. And uh, I mean, if they could not have shut real water down, then how are they causally responsible for this? And then, of course, we need to talk about the duty uh, issue as well. I mean, if it, if uh, if somebody says, "Well, oh, sorry, but you know, this water is bad," well, we're going to ship it out anyway. Well, that was the exact claim in the cantaloupe cases. And what they said was the allegations meet the duty. And whether or not it would have made a difference, causation, those are all questions of fact to be uh, pursued in discovery and litigated either at trial or on a summary judgment motion. And, and I understand your point, and I'm going to address it, because I think when we look at what the cantaloupe cases do, they, they explain those exact concerns. So let me take it this way with, with the duty, okay? Uh, what the cantaloupe cases said, the vast majority of them, when they were looking at whether an auditing company has a duty when in carrying out a, a food safety audit, and by the way, counsel said that this was a, the cantaloupe cases involved a product inspection, not a, a facility inspection, which is that issue in this case. Uh, Respectfully, that is incorrect, Your Honor. Um, if you look at the Robertson v. Frontura Pro Produce case, which is the primary one that we cite, uh, what, what they say in that case is it, what, it's a, a safety inspection of a food packing facility. It was a facility inspection in the cantaloupe cases. Uh, and so they went in and they inspected the facility and they breached the standard of care. And the food auditing company, along with the food uh, distributors were all sued. And the claim against the food auditing company was exactly the same claim we have here. You audited the facility, you were negligent, you, you, you overlooked all these problems, you gave them a passing score, they, as a result of that they continued to distribute uh, dangerous in, contaminated product and people got sick. That was the claim in the cantaloupe cases that were all affirmed and uh, denied motions to dismiss, and that's the same claim here. And what did they say? They looked at these same arguments. Their, Corsi, their motion to dismiss relies on Corsi. It makes all the same arguments that the court accepted in Corsi, which were all addressed and rejected in the majority of the other cantaloupe cases. And so I, I cite the Robertson case because I think it's particularly um, uh, applicable when compared to Nevada law. Uh, Robertson was in, a, in Oklahoma. All these cases were in the Midwest, conser more conservative states. These are, you know, uh, 
these are conservative courts generally allowing these claims. As opposed to liberal courts. As opposed to liberal courts. So uh, for, whatever, for whatever that's worth. Um, and so what the, what the court said was, okay, you say there's no duty. Well, we disagree. There is a duty. And then it laid out multiple bases for that duty. And so the first basis was just a general common law negligence duty. And that's just like in Nevada. If you look at our pattern jury instruction, generally everyone has a duty to exercise reasonable care when their conduct creates a risk of physical harm to others. If your conduct creates a risk, a risk of physical harm to others, then you have an a, a duty to exercise reasonable care. I don't think anyone can say with a straight face that when you're inspecting a, a food or beverage production facility and evaluating whether the procedures and standards are allowing you to create a safe product that's going to be distributed to consumers, that if you, that's a risk that you're doing, you're, it's going to be, uh, cause physical harm to others. If you're not exercising reasonable care, then what do you think is going to happen? There's going to be unsafe products that potentially get distributed, just like in this case. And you don't need to, again, take my word for it. That's the result of the audit. It says in the report, there's no one competent here to make a, a safe product. They recognized it. That by itself demonstrates that they're engaging in conduct that creates a risk of physical harm to others. Therefore, they have a duty to exercise reasonable care in carrying out that conduct. So that's just okay. one basis. What could they have done to make sure that this water did not get out um, to the public? I mean, I'm you're saying it. that you're saying, oh, they should have done something. Well, what should they have done? They should have. They should have failed them and provided the report to say. Provided the report to who? To real water. To say, this is why you failed, and this is why you're continuing to fail. You haven't fixed this. You don't have anyone competent to make a safe product. Well, that get, gets down to, also, the question I had, well, if they had put out a failing report, could they have stopped real water? Could they shut real water down? And it sounds to me like they can't. But, and, and let me, I'm going to get, get to that one okay. second. Okay. So the second basis for the Robertson's court to identify the duty, uh, the, a basis for the duty, in addition to just the ordinary duty of care, was they identified section uh, 324A of the second restatement of torts. Nevada follows the uh, second restatement of torts, and Nevada Supreme Court has relied on section 324A in different cases to establish a duty. So that, that law applies in Nevada. And it, it's really similar to the, the rule in, um, in Sanchez about a special relationship and foreseeability. It's, a, it's essentially the same elements. And so what the Robertson Court explained was, here's a second basis for this duty under Section 324A, which basically says, if you undertake this obligation, whether it's for free or for gratuitous or for money or a contract, whatever it is, if you undertake the obligation to provide this service, in that case, and in this case, an inspection service, you are undertaking the obligation to exercise reasonable care in providing that service. No. And the, they, they gave a lot of comment, and there was, they cited to a lot of the comments under Restatement Section 324A. And some of those uh, comments were examples, you know, the, the, just negligent inspection examples. They cite... Uh, one comment. The A telephone company employs B to inspect its telephone poles. B negligently inspects and improves a pole adjoining the public highway. Because of its defective condition, the pole falls upon and injures a traveler upon the highway. B is subject to liability to the traveler. They give another example with an elevator. You hire an elevator inspection company. The inspection company comes out, says hey, we're going to, uh, you, you, the elevator's great, someone gets on the elevator and, and gets injured, that inspection company is liable for negligence. It's a negligent inspection claim. Now, one of the other comments they cite in Robertson that I think is particularly apt to your concern about 
what, whether they could shut down the facility. And maybe they, they can't shut down the facility, but they could have um, made it aware, identified the problems, alerted Costco, that, and these are all avenues to discover, for discovery, I would submit, Your Honor, what most probably would have happened if they would have taken these actions. But with, with respect to your concern, um, and it's page four of the Robertson um, case at the bottom, it, it's, it's addressing this current concern about, all right, what are they doing? Here. And it says the actor is also subject to liability to a third person where the harm is suffered because of the reliance of the other for whom he undertakes to render services or of the third person himself upon his undertaking. So essentially what they're saying is you're inspecting the company, you're inspecting the facility, and the, the facility operator is relying on you to provide them with the information about what is, is flawed and what the problems are, just telling them. This is true whether or not the negligence of the actor has created any new risk or increased an existing one, where the reliance of the other or of the third person has induced him to forgo other remedies or precaution against such a risk. The harm results from the negligence as fully as if the actor had created the risk. So what that's saying is, you don't have to come in and say, I'm stopping this to put an end to the risk. You just have to say something that would have had, arguably had the other person take precautions, do something that would have minimized the risk. It's a, a rule, there's a number of things that NSF could have done to reduce the risk. It could have, inform them, you don't have this person. It could have said, you, it could have uh, interviewed the person. It could have made sure that there's someone there who's doing this and could have published its report to Costco saying we're giving them a failing score. Costco could have said, well, we're not going to go through you unless you make these changes. There's uh, an innumerable uh, factual scenarios that could have come of this if NSF hadn't breached its obligation to exercise even a modicum of reasonable care. But, Your Honor, again, I would submit those are putting the cart very far before the horse. Those are factual issues that we need to do discovery on to determine what in other cases have been done. In, in these situations. I mean, these auditing companies, these inspecting companies, they're there for a reason. They're giving an inspection. They're not nothing. Imagine this argument taken in any other context. Imagine a, a playground. Someone builds a playground on their property and hires an inspection company. The inspection company out comes out and says, this playground is great, no problems at all, didn't even bother looking at it, walks off, and so the owner says, okay, kids, come play on my playground. The, kid, the playground collapses and hurts a bunch of kids. The, the inspector has no, uh, there's no set of facts where you can state a claim against the, the inspector who did a negligent inspection. I mean, it, it's, that's an absurd result, Your Honor. It's a simple negligent inspection claim to come out and say, Hey, you are, you're undertaking this obligation to inspect. You're providing an inspection service. You have an, a legal duty to exercise reasonable care in carrying out that service. If you don't, you can be sued for negligence. And that's where we're at. We allege that they, they undertook this service to inspect the real water facility. They were negligent in inspecting the facility. As a result of their negligence, no precautions were taken. Nothing else was done to change any of the dangerous practices that the, the NSF itself identified as being present and just did not follow through with them, just continued to give them a passive score, let this go on, and people got hurt. That this idea that they're immune from this lawsuit because, because NSF perhaps couldn't have unilaterally shut down the facility, that is a red herring that does not preclude uh, the several plaintiffs across multiple cases who have alleged valid claims 
that should be given the opportunity to just prove those claims. And, Your Honor, I, I would just, in, unless there are any additional questions, I, I would just close with this. Um, in, in the Turpel v. Sales case, which we cite in the opposition, in looking at the duty issue, the Nevada Supreme Court said, look, this idea of duty is not some sacrosanct idea. There's no magical formula. A, du a legal duty is just the sum total of the policy considerations that we have which say someone, a plaintiff, is entitled to some level of protection. And that's all this is, is the, the policy considerations when you have someone inspecting the safety of a, uh, the policies and practices of a, a product manufacturer to say, hey, you're telling them that there's not a competent person there to make a safe product. Uh, that is a, a foreseeable harm by your not exercising reasonable care and carrying out that function that you've undertaken, that can cause harm to people, and it did in this case. That is a legal duty. It, there, we've alleged it. We've alleged the facts that, under, uh, that support it. We've uh, alleged the breaches, and we've alleged causation, which is almost always a factual issue. And yes, if they could shut down the facility and didn't do it, would that be sufficient to establish causation? Yes. But if it's something less than that, is it sufficient to cause to establish causation? The answer is still yes. It's not a this or nothing. It, it doesn't have to be shut down or you have you can't prove causation. As the restatement, which uh, 324A states, which I just read to you, it's if you're doing something that reduces the person relying on you, the, the person who you're inspecting, to not take precautions, that is causation. That is increasing the risk of harm. That's exactly what happened in this case. It's sufficiently alleged. And all we're asking for is the opportunity to prove uh, a simple negligent inspection case. Thank you. Our courtroom is filling up, so I'll be quick. Three quick points I want to make. You asked counsel pointedly, what should NSF have done in this case? And he said they should have failed uh, Real Water and informed Real Water of the failure. That's exactly what happened in this case. The, the December 2018 inspection, they failed. NSF failed them under Costco's uh, criteria and standards. And what happened? That triggered a re-audit. And that re-audit occurred a couple months later in February of 2019. They acknowledged this in their opposition brief. Um, and uh, during that re-audit, Real Water had satisfied the, the document and personnel deficiencies, and they, they were passed then. Um, and again, we didn't test the water, and they don't allege anything in their complaint that we did or didn't do that led to this water being contaminated. In fact, what they don't tell you, there are other companies that actually inspected the water. If anybody, if there's a duty or causation issue, those companies that tested the water and were in a position to actually say if there was something wrong with it should be in this case, not a third party auditor who's only inspecting the facility. Again, we reviewed records to make sure that they were following their own rules and Costco's rules. That's it. And on that point, from a policy perspective, council talks about policy, and policy is important to a duty analysis. We want to encourage nonprofits like NSF to go out there and do audits to make facilities like this better. Uh, from an auditing perspective, we didn't assume the risk of any problems at that facility. We certainly didn't price for that risk. We charged $1,000, $1,500 for this one-day inspection. And most importantly, we were not in a place to cause any sort of failures to do anything. We were simply not in a position to make any change. So, you know, if you're going to create a situation where you bring a third-party auditor into this case under these very thin allegations and facts, that's going to have a chilling effect on 
third party companies like this actually going out and doing audits. They're not going to want to expose themselves to risk, you know, for a thousand bucks and be dragged into a case with enormous amount of discovery. That's what this motion to dismiss process is, is for. And importantly, you don't hear and didn't hear counsel address the 2009 Sanchez decision from the Nevada Supreme Court. That case is controlling on this issue, the issue of duty, and it's very clear they have not alleged and they cannot allege a special relationship between a third-party auditor and unidentified member, members of the uh, general public. Just like in the Sanchez case, they couldn't establish a special relationship between a pharmacy and uh, injured victims in a motor vehicle accident. That is dispositive of the duty issue, uh, and any sort of amendment would be futile. Thank you. Okay. Council, this is a real close one for me. What I want to do is look over the um, actual cases. I had an opportunity to review your briefs, but I did not have an opportunity to go through the cases. So um, that's uh, your first job today. <laughs> go ahead and pull all the cases for me so I can look at them. All right, I'll get you out of minute order. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. And I'm mindful, Mr. Little, I owe you another decision. I'm in the middle of it. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's just that it's taken me a lot of reading. I've had to go back no, to the transcripts. The five week trial. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, I got one more matter, and that is.